happy to present the world first automated SEO platform. And we got the utility patent approved on that. So what we do exactly, uh, we creating or we created a platform which boosts the organic website traffic in respective of any changes in a search engine optimization or search engine algorithms. And in short, we are automating the schema.org, which presents the structured data to the search engine or algorithms. And this is search as schema.org is endorsed by Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, and Yandex. The problem is search engine algorithm changes significantly every day. And because of that, the qualified traffic to the website reduces drastically. And there is an escalating cost of paid media cost by quarter by quarter is almost like 44%. So we provided iMetadex, a complete solution, a single line of JavaScript to be inserted on any of the website. And with our beta testing, we have seen the increased traffic by approximately 300%. We have seen the reduction on pay cost by 66%, and it is still promising with a no change in the uh, search engine algorithm. So how does we do that? It's very simple. We go to the website, put the website address, put the test now, and they will come up with the analyze and put the data which are minimum required, and within a second, it will give a a JavaScript. Just copy this JavaScript and insert on the either header or a footer of the website and the software takes care of by itself. So that's the beauty and that's the beauty of this uh, uh, product. And to present you some of the two simple cases, uh, this is the graph in the orange is before and graph in the uh, blue is after. And we have seen the significant increase in uh, organic traffic almost like 500%, and we have worked with IIT startup also, and where we have seen the traffic has been increased by almost 1,000%. So we have a couple of pilot uh, uh, companies for a validation, validation, and recently we become a partner with a Shopify, so that will give us a lot of leverage with uh, various e-commerce companies. And these are the few of the, our service, uh, SEO kind of service-oriented customer, which we are trying to test with the POC for the product side of it. Uh, of course, there are going to be a competition, but as of today, we are the only autonomous solution in the market. We are the only complete solution in the market, and we are the only solution in a search engine optimization which gives the continuous change management. Market size is humongous. Uh, you look at a 2.5 billion on SOM with a 10 to 100 million dollar revenue and focusing probably mostly on the e-commerce side. Our business model is very simple, either freemium or we go with the standard with a thousand dollars and enterprise version start with a ten thousand dollars. Our rotor product, we are presenting the product uh, every six months with advanced features, integration with the social media, integrating with the audio and video, as well as with a GPS, geocode, map citations, and satellite uh, GPS also. Myself and Sam been working for almost 15 years. We have two team, one in India and one in Morocco. We are asking $2.5 million. The majority of fund will go in the product development, which will last for two years. Uh, expected uh, revenue in the first year is 1.5 million, and second year is around $10 million. So the first mover advantage, a lot of traction. Please join in our exciting journey. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. I think you need to work on time a little bit. Not too far off, but uh, you exceeded a bit. Okay. Uh, feedback for for Justin on content. Uh, I can I can do a little bit, uh, Mukesh, if you don't mind. Yeah. Please, so, uh, Justin, I think uh, improved presentation. Um, I appreciate you putting the you know, comparison charts uh, before and after together, because that uh, worked out well. Um, on the go-to-market, or actually traction, right? I know last time there was a uh, comment that uh, you need to have proof of traction, right? You have 
those pilot four customers. It'll be nice if you're before the demo day, if you're able to get some testimonials or some some way to um, to show the proof of that traction. Right. I know that uh, the pilots are going on. Maybe you can get some feedback. Um, I think that'll that'll be great. Um, yeah. So those are those are my initial comments. I know there was another comment last time about Google or somebody you know looking at it and thinking, well, you know, if you if you become too big, <laughs> it's a challenge to them. I mean, to me, it is okay, right? Because uh, uh, you. But I think. Uh, no, I, I think the I think the comment was, and I'm I'm gonna be paraphrasing too. I, I'm missing that exact word, but the comment was, if every site has this, has this, right? Then what happens to the A site? The effect gets kind of neutralized, right? So, so the some, the comment from Asmit, if that's what you're referring to, Suki. Yeah, so, I think there was a comment. I, I, I think it's like, oh, is your success gonna is your success gonna come in the way of like you know further growing the business? Right. That was that was the point for him. First of all, it it will be a good problem to have. But again, you have to think it from the competition perspective. You got these solutions, and others are also coming up with these solutions. And if it is all going towards this machine optimized solution, then is this business sustainable? Is really the question. Was what, 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 I think uh, you know just to counter that. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure Jatin has an answer, but my only thought on that is that there are billions of websites in the world, and let's say hundreds of millions that are potential uh, customers of this technology, if you even uh, attack like 1% of those, right? I mean, it's not going to make a significant dent in um, in your, I mean, you're saying you're going to eat your own, uh, with your success, you're going to eat your own. I, I, uh, think, I think the question is more of the recurring revenue continuation, right? Because let's say, IIT startups improved it by a thousand percent. Are you going to deliver a thousand percent improvement every year? Because you know, once the thousand percent improvement is done, then what? Yeah. No, so, I mean the the idea is that I mean, okay, sorry, Jatin, I shouldn't be. Yeah. yeah. So, so the thing is, you know, let's not let's not get yeah. into this. Uh, yeah, that was the that was the feedback. That was the comment. Mm -hmm. You should have an answer for it. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think you couple that with your roadmap. Because on roadmap, you're touching a little bit, but your roadmap should be compelling where people have a reason to keep you, keep paying you monthly recurring revenue for next year and year after and so on. Okay. Right. That's a, all very good points. So and there are more than 200 uh, test points or a fixation point, which in a previous presentation says about the U UXI and uh, many other reasons. So all of them, we can keep on adding one more feature, one more feature, which will automate the solution. So there is kind of never on ending story here because the technology gets on evolving and we have to keep providing the solution to that. I think, so yeah, thing, between you, I, and you and the previous presenter, they bring the customer, uh, you bring the customer and they cook it basically. You know, they, they, will, they will do the conversion. <laughs> Can I add something here, Mukesh? Go ahead, go ahead Ashish. Yeah, please. What I would suggest, uh, Jatin, is that you think about there's a first time initial uh, first year engagement. And then once you establish the baseline, which is you deliver those improvements, then have a recurring maintenance model where you provide a, a cheaper product that monitors and essentially flags any degradation. And that doesn't have to be the same price as the, as the first year. That way, if they do degrade, they will come back and pay you. So you can actually solve this or address this through appropriate product tiering. Very good point. Yeah. So, so basically, if Ashish, um, very good point. So do you mean to say that we, for the first year or first one month, two months or three months, we have a higher cost and subsequently you can come up with maybe 100, 200 or $300 cost like that for maintenance? That is correct. Right. Because that's just upkeep, and if you the, and the purpose of that product is to show that if you establish the baseline, and you deliver some improvement and some changes were made, how, Mr. Customer, how are you doing on these sites to maintain and stay within X percent? And the moment you degrade, you will flag it. So that means they are now notified, and they will basically come back with the you know with the value proposition of the first three months. Again, okay. so you can actually define a nice way because now it's now it becomes much more affordable 
and and I think you'll find probably more traction that way as well. Oh, very good point. Thank you, thank you, Ashish. Okay, um, the demo that you're trying to do, uh, Justin. Uh, I I don't know what others on the panel have uh, opinion on it, but my my point on that is, I think that's a too simplistic a concept now with you know uh, having the uh, the one line code inserted. But if you do still feel that that needs to be done, you know, I would say you should have it recorded, uh, live recorded, and you know, kind of or or, or do it do it in the breakout room. Yeah, I mean, it, it's un, it, I think it's just breaking your flow. It, right. And it, it's 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 this is this is not a customer audience. It's an investor audience, right? So they they are not really asking how did you manage to do that they they like looking at all the other aspects of it and if somebody is curious you know you have an answer for them uh, so you, you say you know all it takes is putting a single line of code either in a header or in the footer of the page and that's that's about it you know this has been done by complex number of products so you know it's not not something yeah. you know they won't understand sure uh, if you uh, if you could page over, I think I captured one or two other things. So hey, let me go over. Okay. Um, okay. Please, uh, I think the words, if you can reduce there, but other than that, that was good. This is good. This is, I think it's doing its job. Yeah, good. Yeah. Right. Um, this, was, this was good. Uh, good suggestion from Suki on that one. Right. Yeah. Keep going. Here, what's the message? The message is that we are lining up the few of the pilots. Uh, these what are, are these three categories? Sorry? Well, there are three three distinct uh, rows here, right? So what are those? No, these are just, there is no categories as such. These are just all. Okay, so first one is the pilot. Second one is also a pilot. Yeah, so these are the, the second and third row. These are uh, our uh, uh, kind of service clients which we are converting them into the pilot for, uh, because uh, initially we had only two or three paying customers. Mm -hmm. So right now uh, we are trying to get them, everyone into the pilot uh, free trial for like one, two or three months, and then they start getting paid. Start okay, if, if that's the case, you know, then uh, I, can you give me a number of how many uh, customers do you have in this traditional business of yours? Uh, I was kind of probably more than 30. 25 to 30. Okay, then pretty much all of them are potential clients, right? So then you should, you know, use that 30 plus number somewhere. Mm -hmm. And what's this last track here, as published in Morningstar and all that? What What's the message? Yeah, this was, uh, uh, we did like a press release and it was picked up by, uh, picked up in Morningstar, Yahoo Finance and all the places. Okay. So one thing is, uh, the there's a typo in, in publish. Please be careful there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And, and and second is instead of saying that, maybe you want to say covered in or covered by. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it should not look like it's a self-paid publishing initiative. It should be more like you know you achieve coverage. Yeah, I think actually that's a good recommendation there. Yeah. I I would suggest something like a buzz or or a more uh, you know impactful word as opposed to publish. And another minor comment, uh, in the earlier slide, you were sort of uh, moving back and forth, and that was a little disconcerting to the to the viewers. So just maintain a smooth front to back, you know, uh, first to last slide, rather than going back on slide. Okay. But other comment is that you, I think you're not highlighting the fact that you're certified, Shopify certified partner, which is, I think, a big deal. Uh, even though you mentioned it there and you you did you did talk about it briefly, but I I believe that's a fairly big deal, right? I mean, uh, I don't know, not being in the space, I don't know, but I thought that that might be. A I'm not sure it's a big deal, but it's a, still a good deal, right? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I think it is based on what Jatin is telling us. It's a big deal because he's got access to these whatever forty thousand. I know how many customers Sorry, uh, I can reach out to uh, uh, all the Shopify uh, current um, customer and reach out to them and solicit them that this kind of services, the phase two part of it that uh, we develop an API uh, as a developer partner and then the Shopify will be able to list our products into their website automatically. 
yeah. this slide the there is too you know too many messages if you're talking about traction you know then forget about covered by and published article i mean you know that's a marketing thing i mean anybody can get article published yeah it's a magazine you know so if if your message is traction that just focus on traction you know don't 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 confuse or dilute that okay. yeah yeah the other thing is the message the hidden message what is coming out in this is first of all you got pilots and you got no real customer and you, you and i'm not sure where is your pipeline that's right. I'm, I'm just kind of yeah, yeah. Hard on this one. that's correct yeah. right so so think of it from a pipeline perspective right and think it from conversion perspective like are these all pilots how the pilots are going to convert Okay. Okay. Next page, please. Okay. Um, I think, yeah. So if you can, if you could turn some of these texts into just just some labels, you know, so that are easier for people to read. Okay. That would be good. And maybe, uh, I think probably the yellow works and blue. That's fine. Okay. Next page, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't have much opinion on this. <laughs> okay, next page. Yeah, this one. Um, what are we conveying here? LTV and MRR. Okay. Why did you choose MRR? Maybe ARR. Yeah, yeah. MRR is fine too. Yeah. This is a monthly recurring revenue. Okay, and I think in this one, if I remember, you said premium exists today and the others don't, or or maybe I'm miss, missing it. No, no. What is the question? Like premium standard? On the this, this this entire model exists today, right? You know, you can have, yeah. Okay. And what yeah. Ashish is suggesting is that instead of creating the thousand dollar model, you create thousand dollar for three months and then have a maintenance. Of hundred or two hundred or three hundred, some some kind of two level of pricing. Yeah, I mean, uh, what Ashish is suggesting is from the perspective that you know improvement happens from the base. Like you know, yeah. they were not using anything, so they will see a jump. Correct. And and then most customers are not gonna remove something that is working. So they will just say, okay, shut it, forget it. You know, done. Is doing its job. And there are some who will be skeptic. Is it still doing something or not? And I think that's for that. Ashish is suggesting, you know, you continue to demonstrate your value, right? Or there's a way for you to demonstrate value. So, so in that case, uh, so basically it's like a, you add on on baseline and you create it. And then you, after one month, two months or three months, just have like uh, reduce the price by not thousand dollar to 50% off. That's what Ashish, if you can highlight the suggestion. Yeah, that's right. So basically, it's a time-based pricing where you can say first three months, thousand dollars, and then subsequently, four hundred per month for okay. upkeep, something like that. It's very keep it very simple because the more the more you complicate pricing, the more it becomes complicated for customers to understand. Mm -hmm. So that's something you want to keep in mind. And when you apply it to the enterprise, which presumably means a, a bigger deal, right, a larger footprint, and so on, you have you'll have to come up with the equivalent of that. So many seats and and all of that, some kind of a, a blanket coverage. My other suggestion on this one would be when you talk about LTV, LTV gets into uh, assumptions around how long you know churn and and all of those things. I'm not sure if that's something you should put as part of your business model unless there's a pretty good reason to project LTV here. Okay. But you should say, for example, what's the pricing model, right? Are you charging per site, per domain? Uh, yeah, those yeah. kinds of things are really uh, important. Okay. Uh, yeah. pricing, pri pricing generally, what we say, they're under thousand products. We charge like a hundred thousand uh, dollars per month. Sorry, say again. What's the product though? Yeah. And under the under thousand products, we charge like thousand dollars per month. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. Product. Whatever the whatever the rate chart is just summarize it here okay because they don't know because what you're referring to is this for e-commerce sites right correct so you have to then say that there's a dimension of tiering by number of products and so under thousand more than thousand but somehow find a way to represent that and a, a simple table 
is good enough. You, you don't need 3D graphics and so on for that. Just keep it simple. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. The roadmap, I think roadmap page is next, right? Yes. Yeah. So this, uh, it was very at least hard for me to understand like as to what's happening from from present to omega to genius to global you know what's 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 changing so um the first thing uh, we are trying to add a lot of uh, features with an advance in the jatin jatin the simple message is this is an engineering roadmap okay. this is just telling me what you are going to be doing and what your team is going to be doing the roadmap needs to show from a customer point of view what's in it for him. You know, so today this is the benefit. Six months later, he gets that benefit. Then 18 months later, there is even more benefit and benefit and benefit. Yeah, and I think my other, I agree with that. My other suggestion would be if you're showing a roadmap, please don't say product and features roadmap. Product roadmap is enough um, or, you know, some other nomenclature. Um, and second is if you're showing a timeline, then show the all the uh, milestones uh, at the top and the timeline below. If you mix it up like this, then I have to literally try to understand where is the six months, where is the twelve months. Just keep it very simple timeline on the on the bottom dots, and then above that are the are the key milestones that you're talking about. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, but I actually have a more basic question. Is this information interesting to the VC? Is it something that you need to think about? Because you're wasting a full slide and, and some precious time on this. So just just a suggestion. Do, do you really think it's going to make a difference to the VCs to know your roadmap? Customers maybe, but VCs I'm not so sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think they, they, you know, if you can get the messaging and content right, the the VC message would be that there is still growth ahead. That is what you want to communicate on this slide because, in the absence of this, you know, the question remains: Okay, are you a one-trick pony or you have something, you know, up your sleeve? My suggestion on that would be: There are two main reasons why investors would care if something on the roadmap is supporting your go-to-market strategy, like you mentioned, Shopify partnership, APIs, and so on, then by all means, you should highlight that, that it's within X months, because they will look at when you are fundraising, what is your ask? And they want the context for where would you spend the dollars and how would you essentially uh, improve your or execute on your, on your GTM. And the second reason is if you are saying something about building a mode or increasing your differentiation, those are the two main things that I believe investors would care about, but I totally agree. If it's not outside of that context, then this is wasting a slide. Yeah, yeah. But if, if the message is, hey, my product works for certain type of properties and it's not working for others and I'm just gonna extend the market reach and all that, like to goes to the Ashish's point, like, you know, if there's a, anyway, I think, uh, was there another page after this? That's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, sounds good. We're ready for the next one. Thank you.